Immunomagnetic separation is the process whereby antibody-coated paramagnetic beads are used to efficiently separate both Cryptosporidium oocysts and Giardia cysts from a wide range of water matrices. In this video, we will cover the IMS setup, the primary capture, the secondary capture, the dissociation of the Dyna beads. Firstly, add one milliliter of SL buffer A and one milliliter of SL buffer B to an L10 tube. Buffers should be allowed to equilibrate to room temperature between 16 and 22 degrees centigrade prior to use. Standard L10 tubes and caps should be used with no cracks or crazes. Take the tube containing the sample and add distilled water to the 7.5 milliliter mark. To resuspend the sample concentrate, vortex the sample at full speed for 20 seconds or until the sample is homogeneous. Next, prime a 10 milliliter serological pipette using reagent water. and transfer the entire sample volume to an L10 tube, noting the sample volume while doing so. Add the appropriate volume of distilled water required to make a total sample volume of 10 milliliters to the 50 milliliter tube. This acts as a rinse volume and should be vortexed for 20 seconds at full speed. Transfer the rinse volume to the L10 tube, using it to rinse the pipette while doing so. Ensure all liquid has been expelled from the pipette before discarding. Before the addition of the Dyna beads, allow them to equilibrate to room temperature for 15 minutes. Mix the Dyna beads anti-cryptosporidium vial for 10 seconds, ensuring that all beads have been resuspended and are not visible on the bottom of the vial. Add 100 microliters of Dyna beads anti-cryptosporidium to the L10 tube containing the water sample concentrate and SL buffers. Mix the Dyna beads anti-giardia vial for 10 seconds. Now add 100 microliters of the Dyna beads anti-giardia to the L10 tube. Cap the L10 tube and place on a rotator. Set to mix at between 18 and 25 RPM for 60 minutes. For the IMS primary capture, Remove the L10 tube from the mixer and place into an MPC6 or MPC1 magnet, ensuring that the flat window of the L10 tube is in full contact with the magnet. Rock the L10 tube end-to-end -end at a 90-degree angle for two minutes at a speed of one rock roll per second. Uncap the L10 tube and decant the supernatant with the magnet facing uppermost. Remove the tube from the MPC magnet. Add 0.4 milliliters of 1 times SL buffer A to the L10 tube. Place a 1.5 milliliters or 2 milliliters microcentrifuge tube in a Dynal MPC-S without the magnet in place. Agitate the L10 tube to rinse the sides and resuspend the beads. Transfer the resuspended beads to the microcentrifuge tube using a long pasta pipette that's been primed with 1 times SL buffer A. Repeat the rinse with a further two volumes of 0.4 milliliters one times SL buffer A. 
place the transfer pipette in the L10 tube and tap the rack on the bench to collect any residual sample volume. This volume is then transferred to the microcentrifuge tube. For the IMS secondary capture, cap the tube and insert the magnetic strip into the vertical position. And rock roll the MPCS at 180 degrees for one minute. Without removing the magnetic strip, aspirate the supernatant using the recommended IDEX setup. Ensure that all liquid is removed from the tube and cap. Peristaltic pump, silicon tubing, elongated pipette tip, flow rate of approximately 200 milliliters per minute, tip should be held at liquid surface. Next, dissociate the dyner beads from the cyst-u-cyst complexes. Refer to your local regulations to establish if a one-step or two-step dissociation should be performed. For the purpose of this video, we'll be demonstrating a two-step dissociation. First, remove the magnetic strip and add 50 microliters of 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid to the tube. Standard acid and alkali solutions should be used and replaced every six months or sooner if crystallization is visible. Next, vortex the sample vigorously in a controlled manner for 50 seconds. Then incubate for 10 minutes at room temperature and vortex for 30 seconds. Place the sample into the MPCS and insert the magnetic strip in the angled position. Leave the sample for a minimum of 10 seconds. During this time, apply 5 microliters of 1 molar sodium hydroxide to an IDEX single spot well slide. Transfer the supernatant to the slide and use the pipette to mix the acid and alkali. Repeat the dissociation a second time, transferring the second hydrochloric acid volume to a separate slide. It's recommended that samples are allowed to air dry at room temperature overnight. However, if using a slide warmer, ensure this is set no higher than 35 degrees to prevent excessive crystallization and reduced recovery. Once dry, the samples should be stained.